Hi, this is JP from Not A Light Summer Arkham. In this video, I will be looking through the releases for Marvel Champions the card game that came out in 2021. So, let's get started. Uh, the year 2021 has been a really busy year for Marvel Champions the card game. Uh, we got a bunch of releases this year. Uh, and they were a bit better spread out throughout the year uh, instead of the drought of the 2020 release dates that came uh, with the um, COVID pandemic. But um, let's start by looking at what came uh, in January 2021. So in January we received uh, the Wasp Hero Pack, which was the second double-sided hero card or three-sided uh, hero card hero and uh, was, wasn't that good to play at least in true solo as uh, Ant-Man so I was a bit disappointed with Wasp I really wanted to like Wasp more but uh, we <laughs> they all can't be winners so uh, Wasp was a bit difficult to uh, get my head around so it wasn't as straightforward as uh, uh, Ant-Man, but it's it was still a fun uh, hero to play. Uh, just needed some more um, deck building and fine tuning than than most heroes. But yeah, that's enough of Wasp. Next up, we got uh, one of our uh, siblings, Quicksilver, in February. So Quicksilver was up. Pretty good hero, straight out of the um, box. A quick, a quick silver has a really interesting and fun mechanic of uh, readying after activating. So it opened up a new way to build your hero, and uh, I think quick silver is uh, up there in the most uh, powerful. Uh, heroes at the moment, but well, the mystics are definitely the most powerful. But Quicksilver is uh, right, uh, right up there. Uh, I really can't say in which rank, but still, I really enjoy playing Quicksilver. Uh, Quicksilver works in multiple different aspects, improves all really well. So I highly recommend picking up Quicksilver if you still haven't got him. And uh, after Quicksilver, we got Scarlet Witch. So, Scarlet Witch came out in uh, March 2021. And uh, as I just said, uh, Mystics are really powerful, and Scarlet Witch is no exception. So, straight out of the box, uh, Scarlet Witch's uh, Justice deck is pretty good. I only would change a couple of cards that really don't sync that well, but the whole um, idea of Scarlet Witch just uh, redrawing those uh, annoying boost cards and uh, boosting those boost cards that uh, she wants is a really powerful mechanic. Uh, Scarlet Witch's pack also introduced some really good cycling cards for Mystic heroes, so um, it is really a good uh, pack to pick up. Then uh, we got our first expansion box of the year. So we received uh, Galaxy's Most Wanted. And I really have to be truthful about my feelings about this box. I hate it. I, I didn't enjoy playing Galaxy's Most Wanted at all. Uh, a couple of the scenarios were okay, but the difficulty was too much, even on standard difficulty, to be enjoyable. It was just a slog and you had to have the best possible deck to even have have a good, good chance to beat the campaign. Um, of course, I'm talking about the difficulty level when this came out. I actually haven't played this that much after the uh, Guardian set hero packs have been released so i maybe should make a revisit to this expansion but i'm not uh, really looking forward to that 
and also the heroes in this box, uh, Groot and uh, Rocket. I don't like to play them. They they really are not my favorite heroes, not by a long shot. They they land there in the bottom with uh, Hulk and uh, uh, well, She-Hulk and Black Panther. Well, uh, Black Panther is a good but good uh, character, but or hero, but uh, I, I just don't like playing Black Panther. The mechanics are not interesting to me. But yeah, that is the Galaxy's Most Wanted. Of course, there are a lot of new player cards there. Or, and uh, I have heard that it, it's uh, more uh, doable now that we have the uh, uh, Guardian heroes out. So those can uh, have better play experience against this campaign. So. Maybe still give this a shot, but it, I, I won't say that go definitely buy, buy this. So yeah, that is a bit of a pass for, for my liking. Uh, next up, we started to receive our uh, Guardians. So first Guardian out of the box was actually in May we got both Star-Lord and Gamora pretty close to each other. Uh, from these two, uh, I really enjoy Gamora a lot. Uh, when when I played with the pre-built deck, the pre-built deck actually was so enjoyable, I decided to only play with that. I haven't done that much deck building for Gamora and I really should revisit Gamora again and do some deck building with the new cards because uh, for true solo, Gamora is an uh, uh, outstanding hero because you can include uh, thwart events and attack events. So you can do all the, the flexible stuff you need to do in true solo. So keep the threat at bay and also deal damage efficiently. So Gamora for sure is a must buy if you like to play true solo. Uh, Star Lord is maybe better for multiplayer. I didn't enjoy playing Star Lord that much in true solo. Uh, the um, leadership deck Star Lord comes with is an okay deck. Uh, I did do a playthrough of that deck in my first play um, series for the uh, new hero deck. So uh, I haven't played Star Lord that much after that. I think I will save playing Star Lord more for multiplayer, but as we are still in the pandemic, I haven't been able to play multiplayer that much. And those are the first two uh, Guardians that have come out. And uh, in June we received a new Guardian uh, Drax, and uh, Drax was actually a pleasant surprise, so I was uh, looking for work to Drax to be the next Hulk, but I think Drax is what Hulk should have been. So a fun um, hard-hitting hero to play, and the Drax's uh, mechanic of um, building up the vengeance is, is really interesting. And uh, I highly recommend picking up Drax if you like, like playing, but again it's a borderline, maybe not that interesting to play in true solo, but really interesting playing in multiplayer. So, of course, uh, your um, opinion may vary depending on what kind of gamer you are. Uh, I enjoy Drax and I should, of course, play more with Drax. And uh, that is that. And uh, next up, one of my favorites from the Guardians, Venom. Venom is definitely up there uh, in uh, power level next to Ant-Man, uh, Scarlet Witch, uh, Doctor Strange and uh, etc. at the top tier. Uh, I have to confess that I love Venom as an anti-hero and of course I wasn't happy to see that this wasn't the uh, other Venom, uh, the Brock version, but instead we got the uh, Agent Venom. But of course, we might get the other Venom later. Uh, we are getting the other Venom 
as a villain in the next campaign box that comes up next year, but not talking about that that much. But for sure, pick up Venom. It's a really good solo hero if you don't like deck building and just want a good justice hero. So pick up Venom for sure. Highly recommend that. Uh, then the last of the Guardians uh, is Nebula. And Nebula came out in September. So I also like Nebula a lot as a hero. Uh, the playstyle of Nebula is pretty interesting. So you want to stay in Alter Ego a bit more than usual. Build up your techniques, then go to hero mode. Do a burst turn and maybe then go back to Alter Ego. So uh, I think Nebula is a bit more uh, multiplayer hero than a solo play hero, but I enjoyed uh, Nebula also in true solo for sure. Then uh, after Nebula, we got a pretty good box in the form of the Mad Titan Shadow. So this is the second campaign box of the year and the Mad Titan Shadow is a must-have. The campaign uh, scenarios are all interesting and well done. They don't feel like uh, too punishing or like unfair like in the Galaxy's Most Wanted box. But instead you get uh, three scenarios first uh, focusing on uh, Thanos and Thanos' uh, minions or, or henchmen, then after that you get a surprise and for, uh, I think now everybody already knows the surprise that next up uh, the two last uh, scenarios in the box are against Hela and against Loki. So those are really well done scenarios and the theme of the box is really good. Uh, I'm not that big of a fan of the heroes in this box. Well, uh, Spectrum is okay. I, I enjoy playing Spectrum, but uh, Adam Warlock just doesn't hit, hit it for me. Uh, the deck building restrictions in Adam Warlock is a bit too um, restrictive, so to speak. Uh, of course, you can add cards from all of the uh, aspects and you have to add as many cards from all of them, but you can only add one, so the deck consistency is not that great. And of course, you are cycling through your deck a lot, but still, uh, not not a big fan of Adam Wallach as a hero. But the box is otherwise really good, so definitely pick up uh, the Mad Titan Shadow if you don't already have it. Uh, in and it, that came in October and November. We received two boxes, at least I received two boxes uh, or, or hero packs or packs, packs. So we got the War Machine and the Hood Scenario pack. So War Machine is a really interesting hero for me to play. I think it's not the best hero for true solo, but still a fun mechanic with the ammo counters and building up your ammo counters, then doing the burst turns and uh, heading back back to Alter Ego to heal a bit and restock your ammunition. And uh, the deck that comes with uh, War Machine brought us a really interesting way to play le leadership. So it's the uh, <laughs> discard allies playstyle. So you put into play a really high cost uh, leadership ally, use that ally, then discard it for big effects. So that is an interesting way to play and uh, definitely look into War Machine for at least for the leadership cars if the, if the hero is not that interesting. The last thing I have received for this game this year is the Hood Scenario Pack and uh, this also came out in November. Uh, the Hood brings us quite interesting new modular sets and an interesting scenario. So the scenario itself is quite straightforward. Uh, the encounter deck is constantly being upgraded with new modular sets throughout the 
game and you can pick the modular set from every modular set you already have in the uh, game. For example, I could just pick modular sets from the Mad Titan Shadow or the Galaxy 100 or even from uh, the core box uh, or the Rise of Red Skull box or whatever or the other scenario packs and do a really specific kind of uh, sideboard for the modular sets. Then uh, the big thing for me in this box is that the two modular sets that are also included are standard 2 and expert 2 modular sets which can be replaced instead of the regular uh, standard and expert uh, modular sets to make some variety into your game so you are not constantly using the same standard deck uh, or modular deck and not the standard expert uh, modular set so definitely try to pick up the hood. The scenario also is pretty interesting and fun. Uh, I have played it a bunch already and I actually did a Spider-Man versus the hood and uh, the goons. So using a lot of uh, Spider-Man specific uh, modular sets that in were brought in uh, the Green Goblin box and stuff like that to make make a really like the Spider-Man Rogue Gallery enemies that Spider-Man usually deals with. But yeah, um, I think that is everything. Uh, in some corners of the world, the Valkyrie Hero Pack has already come out. Uh, during this filming, the Valkyrie Hero Pack hasn't come out yet here in Finland, and I'm really looking forward to getting another um, aggression hero to try out. I have been dabbling into aggression more lately in true solo and would really like to see it work better. So hoping that the uh, Valkyrie hero works better in true solo. But yeah, that is the short overview of everything that has come for this game this year. Hope this was of some use to you. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of the year and until next time.